Dad's Rap. Dad's Rap Podcast. Guys, I wasn't looking forward to when the day would come that I'd be like, you know what? That's a wrap on season one of Dad's Rap. But it's coming soon. I still have things planned for the remainder of the season. Still have several episodes in the can coming down the pipe, ready to hit you with it. However, we are going to take a break uh, pretty soon uh, just to get some more content, get some more guests on. I want to cover a few things real quick before we get started. Today's episode is going to be on the town that I grew up in, the town that still holds my heart, the town that shaped me and made me who I am, and the, the place where I found my footing in life and where I found all my friends. I'm talking about Buna. Texas. To all of you who are from Buna, who still live there, hope you guys love this. If you're not from Buna, you don't know about Buna, you only know about Buna because you know me, prepare to have your mind blown. I also uh, want to apologize for the poor sound quality from the last episode. I touched on it a little bit um, in that episode, but we were basically... Um, right on the water, we were in a wind vortex of some sort. The wind was blowing like 40 miles per hour. It was the worst. Um, and the sound inside that building was, was pretty rough. So I apologize for that. But guys, it's time to go. It's time to learn about Buna. It's time to take all your preconceived notions about Buna, Texas, and leave them at the door. So... Let's rap. I've been working Monday to Sunday. I swear I'm gonna make it someday. And this is for when I do. This one's a victory. Oh, this one's a victory, victory. This one's a victory. Oh, this one's a victory. Hello, hello, everyone. This is the Dad Rap Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Lott, otherwise known as J-Lo. I have been referred to as Glow before. You can call me whatever you want. But I'm here today to tell you a little bit about two things. The first thing I'm going to tell you about is my hometown, Buna, Texas. I call this episode... (laughs) That's really funny. I'm not going to cut that out. I call this episode... Uh, small town, big heart. It's a kind of a running joke, but kind of not. It's a, it's actually when you come into the, into the town, it's on the welcome to Buna sign. It says small town, big heart. And it's the truth. Um, everybody there is connected in some way, shape or form, whether they're actually related to each other or just friends and they have an affection, uh, for the, for everyone. So, uh, I'm going to talk about that. Also going to talk about, uh, my group. Uh, friends, the hashtag straight out of Buna crew. Going to talk about those guys. You've met several of them. Um, I think there's only a few that haven't been on the haven't been on the podcast as of this point. So, uh, anytime. So when I started doing the uh, this podcast, you know, it, it it was to get to know me. It was because uh, look, I've always felt like I've been extremely outspoken on a lot of issues, but. A lot of that gets lost in translation on social media. When you're behind a keyboard and you're typing on Facebook or on Twitter, whatever it may be, it, even even you know through pictures on Instagram, um, a lot of that gets lost in translation because people they can't hear the tone in your voice. They don't know uh, what kind of emotion really a lot of times that you're trying to convey, and so that's why I think that you know podcasting is so important because. Look, it's it's about getting, you know, especially if you're, um, if you're like me and you feel like you have a lot to say and and you but you feel like you're a little misunderstood, and so um, I, that's why I do this. And so I really want people to know where I'm from, what has molded me, and and the men 
and women who have shaped my life and who have helped me become um, what you know what I consider a successful, uh, productive member of society, and and when I'm trying to be a successful husband and father. So um, I'm just here um, to share my struggles and um, and to to kind of show you what has what has shaped me. And one of those things that has shaped me in in, in no uh, small part, um, you know, has been has been Buna, Buna, Texas, B U N A. Uh, population of not very many. Uh, a lot of land in Buna. Uh, Buna is a place where if you get a, like a typical, um, I don't, there's some form of insect or something that is making some kind of noise. Listen, guys, that real quick before we really get going here, that's one thing I promise you in uh, season two of the podcast that's going to be different is the noises that are happening in the background because um, I'm currently in the process of purchasing a new home and we're getting that ready to go. So um, by the time that season two rolls around, I will have a new area to do podcasting in and it will be a lot uh, more soundproof than the one I'm in right now. Um, It sounds like there's some form of bald eagle or winged creature uh, talking to me right now, and I really would like to go outside and, and shoot it. Uh, but a couple of things wrong with that. I don't own a gun, and um, that's probably against the law to shoot a bald eagle, even though I'm pretty sure that's not a bald eagle. Um, anyway, so talking about Buna. So I grew up in Buna, and uh, like I was saying, it's a typical small town. You ever see like small towns on, on TV? You hear about small towns in, in country songs and things like that. Like that, that's Buna. Uh, small town life, everything closes, uh, like at eight o'clock. Um, if you get hungry for like something late at night, uh, if it's super late, uh, you're going to have to go snack it at, at Valero or Shell. Um, they do have a Sonic and, uh, there are several little fast food restaurants, but they don't really stay open late. But anyway, Buna is a typical, typical town. There's a lot of, uh, small, uh, churches, in the area, um, that's where I, you know, came to know Christ. That's where I met my friends. That's where I uh, developed, uh, you know, friendships and community through the youth group. And in the community as a whole is just such a strong, strong community. And I just have an affection for for Buna and for that place. And um, it's it's why I'm I'm extremely outspoken for it. I'm, you know. A lot of times I'm I'm hashtagging pictures straight out of the unit and stuff like that, and it probably drives some people crazy. But it's the truth, man. I love the guys that I hang out with and the, and the women that um, they've married and that we all kind of bond with. And um, they are a product. Each one of those guys is a product of that town. And, man, I sounded really, really country right there when I said town. But they are a product of that town, let me tell you. Um, so, um, just, just some things that if, if you don't, um, like if you don't know about, about Buna, so, uh, the high school, so in talking to my wife, my wife is actually from a different town than I am. Um, you know, she would always mention like people that she went to school with and she'd be like, yeah, you know, um, I knew them. Uh, but I never really talked to him and it it would always amaze me because I was like, how could you not talk to somebody you go to school with, um, her, the amount of people, uh, in her entire, um, in her graduating class is actually how many people basically was in my entire school, uh, ninth, ninth grade through 12th grade. You know, I graduated with, I think in 99 people. And, uh, we just all, like, I knew everybody and that's not me. That's not saying anything about me. That's just saying everything about how small the school was, how small the, uh, the, the town was. And I think there's something to that. There's a closeness that comes, that comes through that. Um, when you start talking about, you know, things in Buna, I, I mean, let's reminisce for, for one second. Um, there's a, there's a place in Buna um called the cult if you don't know what i'm talking about now what would be really funny is if this part of the podcast didn't record because i'm speaking on the cult but uh basically down this road there's a there's a huge compound 
basically with these big stadium lights. And uh, there was always a mystery about what was going on back there. So uh, back in my day, as I try to sound as old as possible, it was uh, a thing to do. Sometimes you get bored. Uh, I know a lot of people probably think that people go cow tipping in in these uh, towns, but nobody wants to push over a cow and step on a cow padding. So basically what we would do sometimes is um, we would, you you drive out there and you, you go to the gate of the cult. And um, there's stories and people can tell you things about uh, getting chased by a van. And there's, there's just there's just this lore around it. Um, and uh, so there's a cult. Uh, and, and this is what I'm talking about. There's so much small town, like small town names and things that we have uh, for different things. There's the slough, gum slough. Everybody knows the slough. That's where the majority of people, I think, in Buna live. Um, that, that's really not true, but um, that for some odd reason, that is like the hub of activity uh, in Buna. Um, there's also the flame, which not sure if it's as big now as it was when I was a kid. But when I was uh, growing up, if you ever wanted to get into a fight, you didn't do it at school. You just like meet me at the flame. There's a lot of people I wanted to meet at the flame, but... Um, I didn't have the intestinal fortitude to say that, nor did I have a way to drive out there. The flame was basically, I'm not sure why it was called the flame, but it was a stretch of road. Uh, People used to race out there, too, Um, not on foot, although, I mean, I'm sure they did that, too, but um, in their their vehicle, in their vehicular transport, um, the flame was uh, just the, the place where everybody went when there was a fight. Uh, they people filmed it it was crazy and i'm not this isn't on cell phones people were bringing cameras out there filming this stuff so um once again showing my age and getting really sad about it uh there's the red bud festival uh if you're from buna you know what i'm talking about the entire town shuts down for that um i know this because a guy that i work with asked me if i was from buna and he said yeah he goes man i was trying to go through buna one day and uh trying to get to my daughter's softball game uh, in a town uh, right past ours, and he said that the Redbud Festival was going on, and it shut down the the main road in Buna, and he was he had to wait like an hour to get there, and he was late. Uh, so he started calling me Redbud, and you know I never thought that it was a big deal. Like looking back, I was like, man, Redbud, it is what it is. Every town's got their got their little festival and their carnival and things like that. But looking back. Redbud must have brought in a ton of money uh, for the community, and it's just a huge part of the culture there. And um, and, and you know that's where everybody hangs out it's during spring break. And it, it's just I'm trying to paint this picture here of it's small town life at its finest. Um, I, I love I love the people there. Like you would go in places. Um, go into like certain stores and in different places like that. And people would know you the cover of my yearbook, my senior year was where everybody knows your name. Now, obviously that's from the cheers theme song. Once again, showing my age, but it is the truth. Like everyone knew everyone. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody calls you friend. You don't need an invitation kick off your shoes come on in tracy bird um i mean it 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 could not be more true you basically knew everyone Uh, everyone now buna is a microcosm of southeast texas which is a uh a small part like a, a microcosm of texas in general that i've noticed so like when you go I go on vacation to Florida um, every now and then, and, and people always tell uh, myself and, and my friends and, and people that are there, man, you guys are the most polite, like the nicest guys. And I'm like, oh, we're from Texas. And um, they're always amazed that, like, people in Texas and people that are from Texas and especially from Southeast Texas, it's just something that's built in. It's how we were raised. Um, Buna's the same way. Like, everyone is polite for the most part. There, you do have your bad apples, um, but uh, 
Buna brought Buna. It holds such a special place in my heart uh, because of the pastors and and the teachers and the coaches and and the people who have influenced my life. And it also holds holds such a special place in my heart um, because I found friends there that I have maintained for my entire life you know several close friendships and close bonds that won't be severed and um it's just amazing and that that that's why I like having those guys on I like I I like having Christian uh my Christian brothers and sisters on which I've only had my wife on sister wise but um I like I like having those guys on because I like showing the camaraderie and I like showing that we're Christians and uh, I've spoken on this before but you know we're Christians, but we can still have fun, and um, we, we there's such a uniqueness to what we have and to the bonds that we have. And so uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, hashtag Straight Out of Buna. So really, where this 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 hashtag started for me, uh, basically, I mean it's obviously a rip off of uh, Straight Out of Compton. Everybody knows that. I mean it's. I, that's where I got it from. Uh, when the movie came out, when Straight Outta Compton uh, came out, um, you know, three or four years ago, um, everybody started hashtagging stuff straight out of wherever. And so that's basically what I did. Um, my friends and I, we capitalize on certain situations and certain times that we can go and um, and hang out. And since we've all had kids, um, this is few and far between, but. Um, when, when back before we had, um, any children, except Scott, my friend Scott and his wife, Amber, who did have children and they brought them, but they were a little older. Um, none of us had babies. I don't think, I know Elizabeth and myself didn't, I'm trying to think, I don't think the other guys did either. Um, but we went and we stayed at the beach for, uh, three days and, uh, two nights and, there are these moments, and I've always called them renaissances because there are these moments throughout our life and throughout our story where um, our friendship, and I, I think this is why a lot of friendships and a lot of groups of friends fall apart because they don't have these uh, these renaissances. And, and so there, there are these moments, there are these weekends, these nights, these get-togethers where your friendship is just peaked and it, and it just is rejuvenated. And in that weekend, our friendships were all... We're all rejuvenated in, in, in some way, shape, or form. We, we played games and we, uh, we cooked. It was really, it was the first time since we'd been adults and, um, since we had been, uh, you know, responsible members of society that we had actually all gotten together like that and planned it and, and, and just cooked out and things like that and had just a, a great time. And, um, I was actually on break from work when we went on that because I was I was out for my anxiety. It's when I first started uh, getting on anxiety meds and dealing with uh, stress and dealing with being anxious all the time. And and so it was right in the middle of that, and it helped so much. And I, and if you are on, if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me on um, any social media, really, uh, you're going to see so many pictures of uh, my friends. And, uh, since that day, we've all started taking the picture the exact same way in the exact same spot, uh, as far as how we line up. And we took a picture that day and that, that right there is what did it. That was one of the, you can just look at us and you can, and, and it, it's before Daniel, my friend, Daniel, it's before he was, um, dealing with his, his, uh, cancer diagnosis. Um, it's before any of us had any children and you can just tell we were at these moments in our life where we, we hadn't faced a ton of hardships and, and we were so, um, happy and we were so, and we're still happy, but it, it was like, we were so free and you could just look at us and tell, man, we were, we were living our best life and we're still in those no matter what we faced, we're still like, it's amazing to me that that picture actually captures how we still are to this day. We're still close. We still share our struggles 
and, and we're still just going through life together. And that's really where hashtag straight out of Buna came from. Um, these guys are my, these are my day ones and my ride or die. And I say they're my day ones because in my head, uh, my life didn't really start until I moved to Buna. And so they've been there uh, through most of the things that I've endured in my life. And I, I'm so thankful for those guys. Um, but let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go through them, um, talk a little bit about them. First, you have Scott. Scott is a guy that was on about the fourth episode of this podcast. Um, I interviewed him, and that was back when I was still trying to figure out my microphone. So if you listen to that episode, I'm... I actually recorded it in stereo, which I did not mean to do. So um, I'm coming to the left side, and he's coming to the right side of the of the of the speakers. And so I recorded that all wrong. But great content in that one. Uh, him and I just uh, for 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 starters, he is without a without a doubt one of the nicest human beings I've ever been around in my entire life. No no question. Um, he, he sets such a good example of what a husband should be, what a, what a dad should be and what a leader should be in your household. He's always, he's been that way since I've, since I've known him since, uh, our days in high school together. He's just such a stand up guy, um, such a leader, a leader of men and, and a leader of, um, of the community. And, and he's such a strong presence to have uh, as a friend, him and his wife, Amber. Amber is, um, I've known her for a really long time, since back uh, in high school. She was in my youth group, and uh, her and Scott both were. And, man, they've been they've been sweethearts since high school, and uh, they're married with a lot of kids. I'm not going to try to say how many they have. I think they have seven. I could be wrong. They also have a grandbaby. And, um if you want to know all the details on that, go back and listen to uh, episode 104 with Scott Hawk. Um, just a just a great a great time with him talking about faith and and talking about how how the Lord changed his life. God used him, no doubt in my mind. Um, he's in Scott is in our group, and and I'm that and I'm close with Scott, so um, I can. I mean, he's such a role model. That's all I can say. Like, and it's rare that there are people in my life who are younger than me that are role models. But Scott is younger than me, and he is a role model. And and I know that's why he's still around. I know that's why he's he's still in my life is because he's such a great friend. I can talk basketball with him. I can talk movies with him. I can talk uh, salvation, uh, my faith, um, just everything. I, I mean, I can, he, he's such a great friend to have, and we have so many shared experiences in this life. Um, as far as our youth group is concerned and, and, um, just a huge shout out to him and his family and Amber and, and everyone, uh, I mean, his mom, his dad, his brothers, his sisters, they've all, they've all played such a pivotal role in my life. So I'm so thankful for them. Um, next you have Randy. Randy is a guy that you met on the last episode. Uh, I did it, uh, with, with my, with my friend TJ, but, uh, Randy has been my friend sent he was the first friend i had when i moved to buna if that if that'll tell you anything so since 1996 so we've been friends for about 23 years which is incredible to me because there's been ebbs and flows in our friendship as far as how much i've been able to see him um because you know he's been off at, at seminary and he moved away a little bit and he's been coaching he's one of the most, uh, and I, we touched on this the last episode, but he's one of the most well-traveled individuals that I know. Um, he is he he stands firm with what he believes and his convictions. He's a pastor at Latexo Baptist Church. He's also the head uh, baseball coach at uh, Crockett in um, Crockett, Texas. And Randy is such a good friend, such a loyal friend. And he brings such a great dynamic to our group because I love you, you can talk. He's so smart. Um, you can talk to him about political issues, about, you know, anything obviously to do with your faith in the Bible. He, he's one of the smartest guys I know. Um, and uh, he's just great. Like when I can just 
when I when I can honestly have a conversation with him and just talk and just be candid and just be real with him, it's so good. And and I've seen uh, such a change um, in his life. I have seen what God has done in his life. You know how much he's grown uh, since we were in high school. Since um, he screwed me over and didn't go to ETBU, um, but I mean he just the 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 way he talks about God so the way that he he talks about his faith and the way that he doesn't waver on what he believes in and what he stands for um is something special I mean, there's a lot to be said for that so uh Randy um love that guy and like we said in the last one hey swipe right on Randy uh single girls out there looking for a calvinist uh, pastor who's also a baseball coach and a, a great friend and a, a great leader, great guy, huge heart. Um, uh, Randy Redke, great guy, um, great friend. Next, we have TJ. TJ Jacobs has been on a couple times. Um, he spoke more in my you know one-on-one interview with him than he did uh, when he was kind of my co-host when we were interviewing Randy. Uh, but TJ, I've actually... I've actually grown closer to TJ the older in life that we've gotten. TJ is a is a fierce fierce friend, and I say that with just one hundred percent honesty. And I, I mean that's it's really tough to explain, but he will have your back no matter what. He will have your back as long as you're right. If you're wrong, he's going to tell you you're wrong. Um, but he he brings so much there's so much joy from TJ and that's I think TJ and I uh have are kindred spirits in that in that way is that we have this childlike joy a lot of times that at things that probably shouldn't bring 33 year old men joy uh certain movies uh just certain situations man we just we we share that and we share a lot of the same passions as far as uh, working out, as far as, uh, I don't know, TJ is probably one of the easiest people to talk to that I know. And the later in life that we've gotten, we're we're a couple of the guys um, who have actually moved um, moved on as far as moving out of Buna. Uh, we love Buna, but we had to go. Um, but we are a couple of guys who have actually moved um a little bit towards a bigger, uh, I'm not gonna say a huge city, but, um, he's in Beaumont and I'm, I'm pretty close to Beaumont. So, um, but it, between TJ and, and his wife, Alyssa, who is one of the hardest working, um, just, uh, you know, amazing women that I know. And that goes for everyone in this group, but the way that they, They don't have children, but the way that they open their home up to other people, and I I include um, our group of friends, I include um, any of their, you know, they do small groups in their house, um, but they also uh, host a lot for younger people. I mean, these guys, TJ, and I've known this about him his, his whole life and our, you know, well, our whole life together. He has such a heart for serving um, that it is just, it's, it's obvious the the way that they are with, uh, the way that TJ is with his money and his time. It's obvious that serving others and, um, really, you know, showing others, uh, the love of Christ. It, 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 you can tell how important it is. I've said it before, what you spend your money and your time on that, that will show you, you know, what is the most important to you. And with, with TJ, it's, um, it's, it's bringing others to Christ and, and spreading and spreading Christ's love. And, and TJ is another guy, uh, like Randy in a sense that he is the way that he holds firm to his convictions and what he believes in and doesn't waver. Uh, he doesn't flip flop or anything like that. That, um, is such a big thing. He, he will tell you his opinion, uh, and he will talk to you about it, but he's not going to make you feel bad. He's not going to make you feel dumb. Uh, he's another guy that is, uh, as this is all these, all these men, super easy to talk to. Next we have Daniel. Daniel, 
it's a, it's a funny thing. So Daniel, before we begin, Daniel was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And I'm, I don't remember the date. I'm blanking on it at this point. But um, he actually last week rang the bell. So he is done with chemo and um, he is cancer free. And praise God for that. Um, but Daniel, and, and when we had uh, we had a little camp out last year when Daniel was right, uh, really getting to the swing of his of his chemotherapy and um, dealing with this this disease, he we kind of broke down like, and this is this is why I'm going to tell you that a lot of us, I think that our friend group is different. Uh, we were at the at this uh, um, camp. Uh, the same one that me, Randy, and TJ were at, but we were at it last year. Uh, there's a picture on Instagram, obviously, straight out of Buna. Um, but when it was over, uh, we all got in a circle and we just prayed. Randy prayed for us, and uh, man, there were tears, and I was really, really worried. I mean, I, I had hope. There's always, there's always hope, and there's always, you know. You always have hope when you have when you have Christ. There's a hope, but the earthly side of it and the worldly side of it is going to make you feel sad. And so I was so worried, and I had this fear that this was going to be the last time we got to really hang out as a group. And um, praise God, you know that Daniel is here, and he's here for his um, his wife Hannah and their 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 son Luke and uh, Daniel. Our entire life. Um, our paths have kind of crossed uh, even before we were good friends. Daniel's brother, um, it was good friends with my brother. And so I, anytime that uh, Micah, who is Daniel's brother, would come to my house um, and hang out with my brother, um, I would see Daniel. You know, he would come with him for a minute or I would see him at their house or whatever the case may be. But then, you know, Daniel and I started to really become friends. And it was interesting because for whatever reason, I, I'm not sure why, but we always, and he will attest to this as well. We always seem to fight over the same girl. And it wasn't like a fight, like we're competitors or legitimately fighting. But for whatever reason, we always, anytime we would like a girl or have a feeling for a girl, the other person would have the exact same one. And it was really weird. But Daniel to say that, like when Daniel, when you take Daniel out of the equation, if there's ever, especially lately, uh, when Daniel's been sick and he's been dealing with all of his um, his chemo and his trips to the doctor and things like that, if there's ever a moment when he can't hang out with the group, it's so noticeable. And and I don't know if I'm not sure it's like that with everyone else. Like if you take one person out, I don't know how noticeable it is of our dynamic. But Daniel being out, man, he just brings even in the midst of whatever he was going through. And I think if I remember correctly throughout our entire life, it's been like this, no matter what he's going through, he brought so he brings so much joy and has always uh, brought so much joy to the situation and just laughter. And he, he has such a sharp wit and, and such a great sense of humor. And, and, and we play so well off of each other. And um, it's been like that our entire uh time together and that is you know he daniel is the youth pastor at central baptist church in buna um he does such a great job with those kids and the way and i will say this about the next guy i'm going to talk about too but uh, and this goes for randy and for scott and um just for anyone who hit like i look i have a son and the pressure and the stress that i feel trying to lead him correctly um, just trying to lead him in in the ways of the Lord is is so great. I cannot imagine um, having to lead a group of men or a group of of kids that way. Like I have so much respect um, for them, um, and and I just look at, obviously I look up to him so much more um, than I ever than I ever did. My level of respect went straight through the roof for him with how he's dealt with and, and not just beating cancer. Like, obviously, the physical part of it is great. But the faith, like he he got sick and it, it shook me a little bit. 
but he was such a great example of what it's like to be uh, to stand firm in the midst of adversity. It, he was such a great example of what it means to be a man. And for the longest time, you know, we, we would all joke with everybody about, you know, just we we would have these these him and I both these moments where we just weren't that masculine about stuff, but. Uh, I, I respect him so much now because of what he's been through. Um, he's a great husband, father, youth minister, um, just a great friend. And uh, speaking earlier, you know, I, I, I was talking about um, when we used to fight over the same girl, he literally muttered the phrase, may the best man win. And we still joke about it a lot. Um, but that's just something funny I just remembered. Um, but uh, his wonderful wife, Hannah, and uh they you know uh she kind of came into our group um when we were we were doing the uh 24/7 youth ministry not youth ministry 24/7 ministry group uh Daniel met her and uh, she's been such a blessing uh her sense of humor and uh, her outlook just the those two together their the way they play off of each other and their sense of humor is just so amazing they fit it's it's just such a great fit and uh we miss them when they aren't around and um sadly enough it's been lately it's been more because of the because of the chemo and things like that but um Br- Daniel's cousin Brian Brian Whitmire um so his brother Keith was friends with my brother and that's kind of basically how we became friends uh Brian is a guy that uh, I would like to describe him, and I think several of us would. He's the straw that stirs the drink. He is the he keeps things moving, in my opinion. Like he can, he's one of the best conversationalists I know. Like Brian can't not tell a good story. Brian could get a piece of bread and spread peanut butter on it. And tell you about it, and it would sound, it would be like a 30 minute ordeal, but he would have you like intrigued and locked in from, from the get go. That's the kind of guy he is. And not only that, uh, the, the transformation I've seen, uh, from Brian since when he was in college, um, you know, high school, college, and to now when he's a, he's a husband and he's a father of two little girls, and it's just amazing. I mean, him and I, um, you know, we, We've always bonded over things. We, we talked about sports, uh, movies, TV, the, the past. Um, but now more than ever, um, we bond about just struggles as a father. And I'm really hoping to have Brian on because he's, uh, like I said, such a great conversationalist. And I don't want to put a lot of pressure on Brian and, and like uh, hype him up too much. Uh, I mean, it's not like people don't know who he is. Come on now. Um, it's Brian Whitmire. He's LeBron James Buna. Um, but... Uh, hoping to have him on just so we can discuss some struggles as a, as dads and some funny stories that we have as dads because there are some and it's a, it's such a revolving door like it's it's just an ebb and flow it's a roller coaster being a father and uh, Brian is literally he might be the funniest person that I know in the way that he tells stories um, like he just uh, he leaves you wanting more like I said about the peanut butter and the bread like when he was done you'd be like okay, but what next? Did you put jelly on it? Like it, he would have you, um, that the, the best thing about it is while he's telling a story, he's cracking up at his own story. And, um, his wife, look, his wife, Michelle is, uh, one of my wife's, uh, best friends that they're close. And, um, it's just, I, I think here's, here's, here's what's really cool about this is the fact that all of us guys came together and, I know that when when a group of guys, you know, when they're friends and they start finding their spouses, you know, it's generally the fact that generally the girls will hang out with the guy's friends. Um, I don't know why that is, but I just find that to be the common thing. But with us, I'm so happy that all of our wives are friends, like legitimate friends, like don't have to have us around to hang out. Like they have girls nights out with just them. They go over, you know, they have, they can have play dates with the kids and it's just like, we don't have to be involved now. Sure. We can get together. Us guys can like, I could be like, Hey, I'm going to go hang out with Brian and 
TJ or whatever, and we could just sit around and just literally do nothing but talk about uh, the past and talk about Buna in general. But I'm so happy that the girls have the kind of relationship where they can, you know, be on their own. They they don't have to have us around. Um, but here's the thing. Um, our wives, I can't say enough about our wives um, and what they put up with. Not because they put up with our bull crap. Now, that's part of it. But it's also because they basically a lot of times just sit around and they hear us yap about stuff that used to happen. And I know that's probably tough for them because they don't understand. I I know they hear the same stories over and over and over again. Stories that aren't old to us, but stories that could probably get old to them. So praise God for them. Praise God for the love of a woman. Praise God for sending us these these women who are such upstanding citizens and and great wives and just hey strong women um hard workers uh amazing mothers and and just wonderful wives that hey love us in spite of our our stupidity and the fact that we're men and keep us in check and keep us in line um, and, uh, you know, like I said, all of this, all of these guys, there's a little bit of Buna in each one of these guys. I don't know what it is. I can, there is something in someone when they're from Buna, it just makes them a good person. I'm not saying that everyone from Buna is a good person. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that there's something that connects everyone I think I'm not, and I'm not saying that Buna is unique in that sense. I think that a lot of small towns are like that, but I really do believe that, that in general, Buna, Texas is a very unique place and it's a great place um, to raise a family. It's a great place to um, get plugged in, in the community, uh, community that that is the place where I, I learned about community. I learned about faith. I learned about friendship. I learned about fatherhood from all of my friends' parents, from from my friends' fathers, who are product of Buna too. If this shows you anything about how I feel about Buna, I, I, every everything I have, everything I've learned, hey, it comes from Buna. So. Uh, small town, big heart. That's all we're about in Buna. Um, guys, I like I said before, um, I thank you guys for coming on this journey with me. Um, coming up in the in the near future, season two, I'm going to take my little hiatus. I'm going to take my time off uh, to focus on on getting uh, more content to getting more guests lined up. The hardest thing, I'll tell you this, the hardest thing to do is line up schedules because I'm not like this super podcaster and this isn't my job. And, you know, it's very difficult um, to line up guests and I don't have a great space for podcasting. So it's very difficult to line up scheduling, like to schedule a guest to be on the show and things like that. Um, So hopefully I'm going to have more guests. I'm going to have more content. I'm going to work on some... um, some more ideas for the show. Uh, we're going to work on artwork, um, maybe some more little snippets. Uh, as for audio wise, I'm going to work on the theme song. There should be a full version of the theme song available soon. Please be looking for that. I'm going to share that on my SoundCloud account. Uh, but guys, I just thank you guys for the love and this, uh, this, uh, maiden voyage of podcasting for me. Um, I don't plan to quit this anytime soon. I love doing this. I love talking for you guys. I love having my voice out there. Uh, so I just thank you for the love and I thank you for the subscriptions and the comments and the shares. And, um, if, if you have done any of that, if you've prayed for me, if you've thought about this, thank you so much. You are much bigger. You're a much bigger part of this process than you know. So, Love you guys. Hashtag straight out of Buna. Hashtag small town, big heart. Peace. I've been working Monday to Sunday. I swear I'm gonna make it someday. And this is for when I do. This one's a victory. Oh, this one's a victory, victory. This one's a victory. Oh, this one's a victory.
Guys, the Dad's Rap Podcast is available right now on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Where did the music... Where did the music... I don't know what that noise was. Where did the music go? Okay. I guess we gotta go. All right. Bye.